So here we are. Let's go and meet Mr. Beaver. Yeah, come on. Yeah, this is the president and CEO of Glorchon, Claude Beaver. How are you doing? Hello, I'm fine. Excellent. I'm in the beautiful store, as you see. Yeah, this is really, really beautiful store. This is, by the way, one of the newest boutiques of Hublot, which opened recently. Uh, how's business doing? Are you happy with the results so far? We had the best uh, month ever in August. And it's the 31st, we still have a day to go. <laughs> so I couldn't complain. <laughs> How was the opening party, by the way? Well, it was nice. We had uh, Alain Delon, you know, the French actor, who is a friend of mine, who came just by surprise. We didn't expect him. So we have cut the ribbon with him. We had some uh, Swiss cows. Because I have Some Swiss farm. cows? Yeah, for, because I have a farm. We had my cheese, yeah. my cow. We had uh, Alphorn music. So it was very Swiss. And Place Vendôme, who is now 200 years old, didn't expect that. So uh, Place <laughs> Vendôme said to us, what is happening here? I can <laughs> what imagine. Are yeah, what I are can... you doing to me after 200 years? And I can imagine people would be really surprised when they see a cow in the middle of Place Vendôme. Oh. Yeah, and this is, uh, um, the, the interior of this store is uh, um, a new concept. Yes. What is it about? Uh, it's mostly about fusion. It's about the mixture of materials, materials that normally don't fit together. So we have rubber, we have brass, we have wood, we have um, uh, um, uh, leather, and uh, we have also aluminium. And we tried with Peter Marino, the architect, uh, to bring this fusion, this surprise, these contradictions of materials, which we have in our watches, to bring them also into the store. What is the highlights here in the shop for you personally? Oh, the highlight is that we are here. <laughs> the highlight is that Hublot has a store on Place Vendôme. Place Vendôme is not like Madison Avenue. Place Vendôme is not like Ginza. Place Vendôme is not like Bahnhofstrasse. Why? Because Place Vendôme is limited. Place Vendôme, the problem, it's a place. And there are a certain numbers <laughs> of stores, and that's it. So either you are in or you are out. So it must and be very difficult to be awarded the contract. How did, you, how did you uh, achieve it? We achieved it through Guerrero's uh, strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Not the normal way. Okay, so, so let know, us talk about the unnormal way. <laughs> no, the unnormal way is probably re relation. And, uh, and we had a lot of help from LVMH. And when LVMH wants to help you, they are quite successful because they are an important brand and they have a lot of real estate in the world. And LVMH gave us the push to get this store. Does it open be like that? It was the former Bulgari store and they moved here opposite next to the new Louis Vuitton boutique. Yeah. Um, was there a key money you had to pay? Yes, there was a key money. Very cheap key money. A very cheap one? Yes. Oh, I never heard about the cheap key money. Yes, because it depends uh, uh, what you get. Uh, a price is always in relation. Expensive is for me when you pay a lot and you don't get a lot back. That's expensive. So now you paid a lot, but you also got a lot back. Exactly. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> could you could you that's tell us how much it was? <laughs> that's the definition of of of, of the price, you know. Uh, if not, uh, um, I don't I don't remember exactly hundred percent, but it was no, it was reasonable because it was also two years ago. Today it would be more expensive. What do you think um, could be the key money here at this place? Uh, this place, the key money could be. Um, Around about, I would say, between 5 and 10 million euros. Huh? Yes, yes, probably. It's good we can sell the store now. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, let's talk about other boutiques. Um, so you've opened many boutiques all over the world and you're still going to open many of them. Where will be the next one? Um, the next one might be Aspen, Palm Beach, uh, Vail, San Francisco are coming uh, now, between now, September and December, just in America. So that's already four, which is a lot. Which is really a lot. How are you? How do you manage to do all this work? Sometimes I ask the question to me too, <laughs> <laughs> and I never find the answer. <laughs> uh, no, I think the answer is uh, passion, motivation. With passion, everything becomes possible, uh, because passion is a kind of expression of love. Passion is love somehow. And so with love, everything is also possible. So when you are passionate, when you have good people who share the passion with you, if you are the only passionate about the, on the team, it's, it's nonsense. So if people share your passion, then you can do a lot. And that's what we do. Yeah, and about this passion, we are going to talk in London because we are also invited to visit the newest Hublot boutique in London. Yes, we'll go to uh, Bond Street. Yeah. And um, after Paris, London, it's a nice trip. Now you must tell me when you want to go. What about now? Now? Yeah, do you have time? Yeah, London is one hour behind. We have time. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> This is amazing. So this is it, the brand new boutique of Hublot in New Bond Street in London. When was the opening? Two months ago, I think it was June, mid of June. It was a great, uh, we had Elina Stas to help us to cut the ribbon. You know, the. it was during Wimbledon because Elina Stas was a tennis player and he came just to Cut the ribbon. But let's talk a little about you. Um, when did you discover your passion for watches? Uh, I think I was 25 years ago when I saw a watch on the wrist of my friend and I saw my steam machine. And you know, when I was a baby and a little boy, I loved steam machines. But uh, at the age of 18, I gave up my... <laughs> my toys as, as a child. You found new ones. And I had to find new ones. <laughs> and one of the new ones I found was watches. And from that day on, I became passionate about watches. And as I had watches as a passion, I said to myself, why shouldn't I work in my passion? Because if you work in your passion, then you never have the impression to work. And there's one thing I hate to do, I hate to work. But I can work 24 hours if I have a passion. Yeah. But no passion, that's horrible for me. So as a student, I could not imagine myself going to work in a bank or in a big corporation. I said, but that will be horrible. And suddenly I said, no, go to the watch business as you have a passion. Then you will work in a toy factory. And if you can work in a toy factory or chocolate factory, it's fantastic. <laughs> if you love chocolate <laughs> and if you, if you love toys. So in, in 80, uh, 1982, you bought Blancpain. Yes. How did you manage to do this? I'm guessing you weren't financially established then. No, but Blancpain was also not uh, uh, financially very well established. <laughs> Blancpain was dead. Blancpain had disappeared from the market since 1960. So the brand has stopped to exist for 22 years. And after 22 years, nothing was left. So I just bought the right to use the name. Where did you hire the employees then? We had to find them again. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a big crisis in the watch business because of the quartz revolution. And a lot of watchmakers lost their jobs because uh, quartz doesn't need watchmakers. Uh, a quartz watch is a watch with a battery 
so there's no work for watchmakers. That's why so many watchmakers lost their job. So when we came back and we said, hey, we are doing the art of making watches. We are giving birth to the tradition again. Many watchmakers were interested to join. And after one year, we already had seven or nine watchmakers, and we produced 97 watches after one year, nearly 100. So uh, as you told me, everybody else was uh, making quartz watches except you. You wanted to produce mechanic watches. Um, uh, weren't you worried uh, bucking the trend? No, I, I am a contrarian guy. I always like to do the contrary of others. I always want to be the first. I always want to be different. And I always want to be unique. If you want to be the first, different and unique, you are swimming against the trend. So you also like taking risks? In those days when you, we bought the name for 25, uh, 22,000 Swiss francs, so the risk is zero because all you can lose is 22,000 Swiss francs. <laughs> but if this is everything you have, then it, uh, yes. it's quite much. <laughs> it's a lot, but if you are 30 years old, you have another 30 years uh, to build up again. The risk would be now. If now I would try to establish a new brand, if now I would invest 20 million, then I have a risk. First, 20 million is more than 20,000. And secondly, now I'm 62, 63. So how many years do I have if I, in, in order to succeed? Maybe five, maybe seven. So I have no time to recover. When you are 30 and you fail, who cares? You start again because you have another 30 years to succeed. <laughs> so the older the get you get, the more risk you take. Yeah. Um, Blancpain became very successful under your guidance. The same success you've accomplished with uh, Hublot. What is your formula of success? I think uh, it's passion, work, work, work. But you need a handful, so I need a, a fifth element. Fifth element, help. If you have passion, if you have work, work, work. Which means he always starts working at five o'clock in the morning, also yes. the weekends. And if need, yes, of course. And uh, we, we, because we work seven days, the sun goes up seven days in a week. I don't know who uh, uh, invented the week is five days. The week is like the sun, it's seven days. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Uh, I mean, uh, so we work seven days, of course, and we, if needed, we start at three o'clock in the morning. If not, we start at five. And I'm constantly in contact with my people. And that is my help. That is, you know, and help is you me. It means you are ready to learn. You seem to have an endless energy. Where do you take it from? Sorry to say, I take it from love. If you have love... Oh, sorry, this is great. Uh, because it looks like if I speak like a priest, you know. Uh, <laughs> if you have love in your heart, and if you can l give it and receive love, then men, I mean women and men, are in harmony. What are the future plans you have with uh, Hublot? Uh, to establish the success. Success is a long process, and you, re you reach it or you think you have reached it one day, but then you must maintain. You must repeat. And that's the most difficult part of the success. How can I maintain it? How can I even develop it once I have reached it? So that's the goal, maintaining our success as it is, not becoming a fashion brand, uh, not giving back, uh, reducing quality, uh, getting more and more involved in creativity, bringing new innovations and maintaining the brand at the high level where it is now. What is your favorite watch? That's the one I will wear. I usually wear my favorite watches and this, among all the favorite watches I have, this is la favorite of all. So thank you very much for meeting us and for the interview. I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Where, where do we meet next? <laughs> <laughs> oh, where do we want to go next? At Bahnhofstrasse in Zurich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. Probably we'll see us then. <laughs> no, thanks and uh, yeah, take care. All, the, all the best. Thank you.